Okay, let's continue. So let's consider another example. In our society, when we when we feel that one guy may be guilty, we actually adopt the presumption of innocence. That means we basically consider one guy as innocent until we have a strong evidence showing that he or she is guilty. Okay. So suppose there is a person who probably stole some money. If we are going to test this situation, we're going to again have our normal hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And here, the normal hypothesis is that the person is innocent, and the alternative hypothesis is that the person is guilty. Okay. So what does that mean? Originally, before we have any observation, before we have any evidence, we must assume that the person is innocent, and we're going to make some conclusion or put him into jail only if we have a strong evidence. Okay, so it's always true that this guy may be actually guilty, but we cannot find a evidence that's possible. Okay, so when we claim this person is innocent, we it is possible for us to make a mistake because he may he or she may actually be guilty. Okay, but still we choose to be somewhat conservative. We must first assume that he is innocent, and then when we have an evidence, we put him into jail. Okay, so let me formalize the introduction here. There are two possible errors that may happen. Either one is guilty, but we think he or she is innocent, or one is innocent, but we think we think he or she is guilty. Okay. Then, which one is more critical? Typically, we say the second one is a more serious problem, a more serious error, right? Because we cannot. It's unacceptable. For us to say one guy is guilty when he is innocent, so we 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 hope that that's not going to be happening in our hypothesis testing process. So we will put the innocent part as our normal hypothesis, as our original belief, and try to see if we can find a strong evidence rejecting that hypothesis. Okay, so we do that. We will say one guy is guilty only if there is a strong evidence. As long as we do not have a strong evidence, we will still claim that he or she is innocent. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, in the last example, let's consider the following hypothesis. So I want to ask. Whether a candidate is preferred by more than fifty percent voters, okay, that's my question. So now we need a default position, right? We need to have our basic belief before we do any data collection. So because the percentage that we care about is fifty percent, our normal hypothesis would be stated in this way. We would say, okay, we assume that P is fifty percent. P is the population proportion of voters preferring the candidate. Okay, we will assume that P is exactly fifty percent before we do any hypothesis testing. But then we have a question: How do we write down our alternative hypothesis? Should it be p greater than fifty percent, or should it be p less than fifty percent? On this is actually a good question. Okay, either way can be right. It just depends on what's your application. Okay, it's possible that we want to prove this or that, so that we make our decisions accordingly. So let's see how to make the decision. The choice of the alternative hypothesis depends on the related decisions or actions to make. Suppose today the scenario is that one will go for the election only if he or she thinks she, he or she is going to win. Okay, 
That means he wants to find a strong evidence, a strong evidence supporting that p is greater than fifty percent. So the default decision is do not go for an election. So the alternative hypothesis would be this one: if I can have a strong evidence showing that I will win, then I go for the election. As long as I do not have a strong evidence showing that I will win, I will stay in my home. Okay. In that case, if you want to prove this, if you want to find an evidence for this, you are going to state the no the alternative hypothesis in this way. On the other hand, suppose the default position is that I just want to participate in the election. If there is no one stopping me, I will go for the election. And then, you have a possibility to stop me, as long as you can tell me that the winning rate is very small. As long as you can find a strong evidence showing me that p is less than fifty percent, then I will stop. Okay. In that case, your task would become proving that p is small, finding strong evidence showing that p is small. Okay, then the no alternative hypothesis would be the other way. So, again, let me confirm that both can be fine, as long as it is something you want to prove, something you want to find a strong evidence to support that. Okay, and it's an alternative thing. It's an opposite thing to your no hypothesis. So. <coughs> Very quickly, some remarks. For setting up a statistical hypothesis, our default position is put in the null hypothesis. The thing that we want to prove, or the thing that needs a strong evidence, will be put in the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so either we can prove it, and then we do something or something, or we cannot prove it. Then we basically make no conclusion. We will stay with our default belief. When we want to write down the mathematical statement, the equal sign will always be put in the null hypothesis. Okay, so that means I originally believe something is true. Something is true. Mu is one, p is one half. I originally believe something is true, and ask, is there a strong evidence showing that that's not true? Or that's not true in a specific direction. So the null hypothesis is always an equality. The alternative hypothesis is always an unequal sign or strict inequalities. Okay. The direction of the alternative hypothesis, when it's an equality, depends on the business context. Just like example three, we just mentioned. So, given that we have two kinds of alternative hypotheses, if that hypothesis contains an unequal sign, we say the te test is a two-tailed test, because we would be trying to see whether our observed outcome is at the left tail or the right tail. Either way, we have an extreme observation, and either way, we can prove we can show that. Quite likely, the null hypothesis is wrong. If, on the other hand, we are talking about a strict inequality in the null in the alternative hypothesis, we say the test is a one-tailed test. Okay, <coughs> we need to have a either a left tail or right tail observation so that we can conclude that H A is right. So now. Suppose we want to test the value of the population mean. In a two-tailed test, we are testing whether the population mean is significantly deviate from a hypothesized value. We do not know or we do not care whether it is larger than or smaller than. But if we are talking about one-tailed test, we would be testing whether the population mean is. Significantly deviating from a hypothesized value in a specific direction. So if we have some original belief about the direction, 
we use a two-tailed test. Uh, sorry, one-tailed test. Otherwise, we use a two-tailed test. Okay. Now we're going to see some examples today and in the next week. But at least please memorize. When it's an unequal sign, we call it a two-tailed test. When it's a strict inequality, we call it a one-tailed test. Thank you.